open stage lift shaft at the State Theatre in Pretoria in 1989. She broke both legs, both arms, her ribs and every bone in her face. Gaino underwent a painful six-hour operation after which she remained in a deep coma for four weeks and a semi-coma for three weeks. She miraculously survived and her story forms part of a series of stories about the human spirit prospering in spite of the circumstances. To tell us more about this inspirational film, we are joined by storyteller uh, and Wayne Habig. And Wayne, thank you very much. He's also the creative director on this. Yes. Um, Wayne, this is an incredible, incredible story. And I can only imagine that it speaks for itself that it had to be included. I mean, she's an incredible woman. I've, I've never met anybody in my life that's as much of a proof point of overcoming a wrong without any fear or hatred in, in her heart. She's just she's a miraculous woman. I've never, she's been such an inspiration to me as a person. It's just unbelievable. You know, it's, it's quite obvious that her story needed to tell, but I, I wanted to understand the discussion that you had with your team on why. And I, I can only imagine that there must have been a, a massive discussion before you even embarked on telling her story. I, I think the big thing was like, what part do we tell? It's, it's been a 26 year long story. And the most unbelievable, I think, in the process of making the film is that we actually became part of the story by, well, we, first of all, we just wanted to take, we wanted to tell her story and the idea is to tell it in a short, short time. We wanted to represent it through one of her favorite poems. Um, mm. I thank thee God for, for this most amazing day by E.E. E. Cummings. And we were telling that we thought, let her recite the poem and we'll tell her story visually through that. And as we discussed how and where she would be doing this, we, we thought, why don't we take her back to the State Theatre? And when we asked her that question, we only realized she's never been back to the State Theatre. She's never stood on that stage. And when we asked her, first of all, would you like to go back? She just said, no, there's no chance I will ever go back to the theatre. And her being the person that she is, two days later, she sent us a mail saying, I want to go back. I want to do this. I need to overcome that last demon that's been hanging over my head. She's overcome everything in her life. She's learned how to walk again. She's learned how to talk again. She's learned how to move her face again. She's learned to become a normal human being. 26, this massive 26 year long journey. But that one thing has never, she's never been back on the stage. And we were luckily, we're part of her overcoming that one last little hurdle. There's no way that as a creative team, as a, when you and Henny and the team are sitting down and you're talking, that you can set up something like that, <laughs> that you can even emotionally prepare for something like that, because you're somehow part of somebody's very personal journey, personal story. You're telling a story, but you're also part of their own journey. No, it's, it's unbelievable. Like I said, she, she, the first time I heard about her, I just thought, I'm not sure what to expect. I'm not sure what this person is going to be like. And five minutes after speaking to her, we were all basically in tears. You, ca you, can't or you can't understand what she's been through in her life. And the fact that she's just every little step by little step by little step, she's just overcome everything. Um, so there's this decision to take her back to the State Theatre. She rejects it. Two days later, she sends you an email to say, I, I, I'm ready to do it. Take me through that process, because now you've got to, uh, I assume, pick her up, take her back to the State Theatre. And, and what was that, that moment like? I mean, she's got a pretty, she's got a very secure life in, in Georgia now. She lives with, she lives close to her mom. She, she's very close to her family, a lot of friends, a lot of support. Um, and when we, obviously, we went down, we, we flew down to go and chat to her and find out a little bit more about her story. And then we decided, like, why don't we take her back to the State Theatre? And we, obviously, were then talking about email and telephone conversations. And we decided to then fly back down and spend some time with her, film her down there in George, and then film the journey coming back to the State Theatre. And I mean, from her going from this bubbly, very fantastic, friendly and warm person, a very curious person, suddenly to get to the stage where she just started like quietening down a little bit again. And you could see that intimidation and that fear. But once she was on that stage again, she just... She's just strong again. I've, I've never met anybody in my life that's as strong as Gaino Young. I, she's unbelievable. Wayne, very quickly, what is the plans with this, with this film? The f it's just to... She's got... She, Gaino is... She makes her life now as, as a blog writer. And this, I th hopefully this film will just push her a little bit and give her a little bit of publicity and make her blog stand out a little bit. I think it's... Wow, what a great story. Wayne Habig, uh, he's part of the... Uh, he's the 
creative director for TNW, speaking to us about the story of Gaino Young, who tragically fell 18 meters down an open stage lift shaft at the State Theatre in Pretoria in 1989, only to survive after doctors I told her she wouldn't. The film is one of APSA's a Prosper campaign. You can Google it, find out more. It's a remarkable story. We take an ad break, you know, anyway.